Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're focusing on decals. I know a lot of people avoid decals because they didn't like how they looked when they first tried them out. I know I didn't. But today I'm going to show you how to get that painted on look like I did with this Blade Guard veteran. By the end of this video, you're going to see decals aren't that hard. They just require the right tools and some know how. So let's go ahead and get started. So, the most common decal people use in 40k are Space Marine chapter badges on the shoulder pauldrons. But what if I told you that is actually one of the more difficult places to place a decal? As you can see, the pauldron curves vertically as well as horizontally, making a flat decal try to conform both directions. On this warlock on the other hand, the rope is really wavy, which might seem more difficult, but it only really curves horizontally. Vertically, it's essentially straight. So in short, what I'm trying to say is if you haven't had success on Space Marine Pauldrons before because you thought they were easy, they're not. So don't beat yourself up over it. Okay, so let's get cutting that decal. What the? Hey guys, it's me, Garrett. I've taken over Daniel's video to show you how you can make your own decals if you don't like the ones that Games Workshop makes anymore or if they stop making the ones that you liked. There's two ways to go about this. The first way is to make your own decals from scratch. That means you have to go get your own transparent decal paper to print your designs onto with an inkjet printer. And you're gonna need some crystal clear coating to seal in the designs so they don't wash off when you're applying the decals. You'll be using a photo editor like Photoshop, Krita, or GIMP to make the designs. You're looking at something like 1200 DPI at the minimum. Once you've got your designs, you print them onto the transfer paper. If it's a white surface, you're in luck. You'll be working just fine from here. But if it's not a white surface, you're in trouble. Most printers are designed to print on white paper. They assume that they'll have an opaque backing that they'll print on top of and they'll be bright because the surface is white. However, if your model is not white, you'll have to make your own backer. So you'll print a white silhouette of each image as a backer several times until it's opaque. Then you'll print your designs on top of the backer. This can be difficult because not all printers are aligned perfectly, so they might have trouble with this process. Also, white ink is hard to come by. I don't have white ink for my printer and you probably don't either. I had to call around several print shops to find out that nobody in my area is able to do this job. That left me with option two, which is to call an online vendor like Fallout Hobbies and have them print up the designs I want. This meant that I had to show them what designs I wanted, tell them what kind of model it was going on so they know what size it is, and help them determine what size, shape, and design I want on my transfer sheet. Once that's all settled, they'll print it up. This whole process takes about six weeks, so make sure you start early if you need it soon. Once it's done though, you'll have the designs that are exactly what you wanted instead of making do with what Games Workshop is making. Hopefully that helps guys. Good luck and happy hobby. Uh, thanks for that info, Garrett. Now, where was I? Oh yeah, cutting out the decal. So the decals today are a lot better than they were when I first started this hobby. They have a lot less of that clear material surrounding them, so usually I just cut them out regularly, making sure not to actually hit the decal itself. Despite the decals being better, there are some rare cases where you will want to get as close as possible to the decal and trim off that clear material. I only do this if I'm trying to fit a decal in an exceptionally small area where it otherwise wouldn't fit with that clear material. So you can go ahead and get your hobby knife and just go ahead and trim that as close as possible. Now before we apply any decals, you want to prep the surface. A thin down coat of gloss varnish or lamine medium will smooth the area ensuring the decal gets no air bubbles underneath. A 1 to 1 ratio of gloss to water mixture will work perfectly fine. Okay and now it's time to apply the gloss varnish to the model. When applying the gloss varnish, ensure to cover the whole panel that the decal sits on. This will ensure that the surface has the same sheen and look uniform when done. If you just cover around the decal with the varnish, you're going to notice it even after a matte coat. 
Also make sure that your gloss coat is going on uniformly and don't let it pool in any areas. Once your gloss coat is dry, we can prep our decals. I like to place them on a paper towel and moisten them with a water dropper. Some people place their decals in a water dish, but this can cause them to float around, get stuck to the side of the cup, or just lose their adhesive. Also, this method allows you to do many decals at once without having to worry about them. While the decals are loosening up on the paper towel, you'll go ahead and prep the gloss surfaces with micro set. Go ahead and apply the micro set to those areas, making sure it's uniform and not pooling. Also, if you're a brush licker like me, make sure you don't lick your brush because Microset and Microsol are both toxic. After giving the Microset about 30 seconds, go ahead and lift your decal off with your paintbrush. Place the decal as best as you can where you want it to be. Then moisten your brush bristles with water to move it around. Once you get it into place, lightly brush it to remove water underneath and smooth it out as best as you can. Now in this step, it's not going to be perfectly smooth. Your main goal is to get it where you want it on the model. Later steps will get those wrinkles out and any lifted areas smooth. Once the decal is completely dry, I usually give it a few hours to a full day, you're going to move on to Microsol. I've used other brands such as Vallejo's Decal Softener, but Microsol has worked better in every single case. You'll then go ahead and apply the Microsol to all the decals and let it soak in for a few seconds as it chemically softens them. Then go back to your original decal and massage out any wrinkles with your brush. You can do this step multiple times, so don't rush or be overly aggressive because you don't want to tear the decal. Furthermore, this stuff keeps working after you've finished massaging it, so what looks like a small wrinkle now might disappear in an hour or so. For this decal, I had to apply a second coat. I generally give it a few hours between coats, but it's better to give it until the next day. Go ahead and apply it the same way you did the first coat and massage the wrinkles out. Once your decal is all smooth, you're going to apply another layer of that thinned out gloss varnish over it. This will completely hide the clear surrounding on the decal, and once matte coated, it'll give it that painted on look. And lastly, decals always look best when they're incorporated into the model more. This pure white emblem wouldn't last 10 seconds on something I was wearing, let alone on the battlefield. I'd somehow manage to get spaghetti sauce on it in like the first 5 minutes. So what you want to do is go ahead and weather up the decal a little bit. To do this, go ahead and grab a small piece of packing foam and dab it into the underlying color, in this case, black. Wipe most of it off onto a paper towel and dab it onto the decal. This will give the illusion that the decal was painted on and that the paint has been scratched or chipped. If it looks a little bit too weathered, you can go ahead and just wipe a little bit of the paint off while it's still wet. And the last thing I like to do to weather up decals is apply a little bit of Agrex Earthshade and dab it on the decal around the scratches and chips. I wipe most of it off, but I just want to dirty up that white just a little bit. Lastly, give your model a matte coat with your favorite spray. In this case, I use Tester's Dull Coat. And you're done. Now, I know some of you have decals on old models that you're not happy with, but if you haven't clear coated them yet, you can still save them. I've used this tutorial here to fix some of my old decals, and it can help you too. I hope this video helped you tackle some decals for your army. 
Hit the like and subscribe for more content. And as always, thank you for your time and take care.